Hello, welcome to another My Life in Objects. So in this video, there's a couple of things I wanted to do. One is to just flick through the, the book that you see on the camera at the moment, The Problems of Philosophy by Bertrand Russell, in case you're curious about what's in it. Um, but I thought, well, as I dug this out to do the episode, maybe I should just do a quick pass through of interesting books that uh, give you a pathway, I think, into philosophy, if you're interested, and, and just go through, I've just pulled off my bookshelf various books which over the years I've read, I've enjoyed, um, and depending on how you like to learn or study, may give you an idea about a way in to the study of philosophy, even if it's like me, purely, you know, if informal is the right word, but my point is, apart from my um, short course in uh, the philosophy of mind, which I did through the uh, Oxford University online learning program quite a few years ago, that's my only formal qualification I have in philosophy, is that single um, philosophy of mind. But all the books I've got here are really about more about sort of a general appreciation of philosophy so I haven't got any philosophy of mind books specifically here so we'll get back to this book in a moment but I'm just going to flick through talk about different angles in in terms of the first philosophy book I actually read uh, which the one that hooked me and I think I may have had this on camera before it's this one so I'm assuming there may must be an up-to-date copy of this although I'm not sure with, if made simple books still exist. They probably exist in a different guise. But this one, this really got me hooked and then got me onto reading. So that's what started it for me. In terms of these, uh, I mean, these books are obviously primarily, these types of books are aimed at, you know, self-learning, um, very similar to those, you know, teach yourself style books. But often they get used on entry level um, or adult learning philosophy courses in the UK. Something in a similar vein, but much more advanced and much more challenging is this, Mastering Philosophy. Um, I haven't read it all yet, but it, it, it's incredibly engaging. And you can see it's definitely aimed at being a, a book that you might use to support a college course. Um, so much more in depth, much more uh, challenging to read. <clears throat> so that, those are, a, you know, one potential way in is just to get a, a book that's aimed at either self-study or like what I would say, you know, undergraduate level study, sort of first year undergraduate courses. <clears throat> then other possible ways in um, you know you've got your sort of classic uh, anthologies um, so you know this I know ends up on a lot of lists although of course this is very much through the lens of Bertrand Russell but I actually quite enjoy that it makes it super interesting um, and it's good things we're talking about another Bertrand Russell book then we've got this which I'm not sure how long this has, has been now I bought it a couple of years ago when I was a uh, aware of it. This is The History of Philosophy by A.C. Grayling. Um, I basically came to know about A.C. Grayling because he crops up a lot on In Our Time, uh, which is that um, Radio 4, but it's released on a podcast now uh, simultaneously, uh, which is, you know, goes through the history of ideas and uh, the host is Melvin Bragg and each week they're getting different experts. And there's four components to, I think, that, which is uh, episodes about history, episodes about philosophy, episodes about religion, and episodes about science. I think that's right. And so I've always been interested in the philosophy ones, and A.C. Grayling turns up a lot on those, amongst many other um, philosophers um, that, that seem to get invited back regularly to talk on different topics. So it's quite interested in finding this and then we'll, we'll get on to some um, penguin stuff no doubt in a moment um, so that's another 
um, sort of anthology type book. Then there's a whole series of ones that people might find a little bit easier to grasp through like a, a quick read. So, so this one, I don't know if anybody remembers this series of books. So there was all these beginners books and they, they're laid out like a, a graphic novel. Um, so that's a great way in if you if you like that more sort of um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for but but you you, you know you like a lot of um, pictures that are going to help you illustrations that are going to help you remember what's in the actual text um, so this is probably quite old now it's a number of years old but yeah and these were very popular um, I remember when they first came out. Then we've got something like this. You've probably seen lots of books in a similar vein where they just like list a, you know, 100 thinkers. And there's basically a, a one page, two page spread. Here it's one page of writing and then a picture of the, the thinker in question. Uh, what this does is, this is interesting because it, it deviates a little bit. Um, in here is also... Um, people that may not be straight away considered necessarily philosophers, but they had ideas that were impactful to philosophy. Um, and so it's interesting actually how the uh, the contents is laid out under these different categories. But uh, I, I often dip into this book. I find it very interesting if I just want a real quick, um, you know, minute uh, reminder of some of the key uh, points with certain thinkers. But again, you know, you're limited by the fact that you have really only one page. But it's it's I think these are great for just, um, what's the word, giving you a little taster, I think, um, in terms of very simple anthologies. And then you've got the more weighty anthologies. Again, these are more aimed at, um, you know, the, dare I say, the casual reader. Um, this is a big favourite of mine in this ser these series, actually. And what's nice with these often um, is that it's sort of a bit easier sometimes here to see who might be the more popular philosophers because they have a, a larger section. So the sections expand and contract based on um, the different philosophers. So, you know, for instance, the section on David Hume um, may be slightly longer than, say, a section on um, Ludwig Andreas Feuerbach. Uh, but it, again, it's nice if you like this more, dare I say, multimedia type learning um, where you've got, you know, photographs, um, call outs, all these other things, cross referencing. Uh, yeah, so so I this is a personal favourite of mine. But just bear in mind with this sort of stuff, it tends to focus on just one aspect uh, of the of the philosopher in question, um, and they sort of tie it back to these diagrams. So it doesn't always give you a um, an in depth analysis of of all the philosophers' um, potential works, but you do get key works listed as well. Um, the this is interesting. Uh, this is the story of philosophy by. Brian McGee and um, here you might find that, that the way it sort of groups together similar types of philosophers but there are sections where it might feature a single philosopher. Again it's got that sort of nice you know pictures, drawings, call outs um, type layout which again some people find uh, a nicer way of learning rather than dense text but again it's going to basically focus on main philosophers. There's not a ton of stuff um, in in the the real sort of you know more recent um, era. I mean, the, the 20th century philosophy section. If we can find it. Where is it? Democracy. Pragmatists. There you go. So really just that is, is 20th century philosophy. So if you're interested in that, then yeah, you're going to be not well served necessarily. But again, if you're trying to get a bit of an overview, um, it's nice. I, I am 
I do, I do really like Brian McGee. He did a series on the BBC, I think in the 80s, where he interviewed um, various philosophers about other philosophers. Um, and that those turn up on YouTube. And while we're talking about um, Brian McGee, a couple of other interesting books. By the same chap. This is the um, text for one of the one of the the series that he did on the TV. He did two, I think. And uh, so this one, if we go back, there's Brian McGee there. Um, he does a great job of like condensing down philosophical ideas when he's sitting there with philosophers and recaps. So yeah, this particular series that's what was covered. So we've got Plato, Aristotle, Medieval Philosophy, Descartes, Spinoza, Leibniz, Locke and Berkeley, Hume, Kant, Hegel and Marx, Schopenhauer, Nietzsche, uh, Husserl, Heidegger and Modern Existentialism, the American Pragmatists, Frieger Russell and Modern Logic and Wittgenstein. And each section you can see there's the, the dialogue between McGee and whichever contemporary philosopher he was interviewing about you know the particular philosophers in question so you know all these philosophers i'm assuming were picked because they have a particular interest in um the philosophers they were talking about or are experts or are um from that particular area of philosophy but yeah very very interesting and great if you can track that down on YouTube. I, I think not all of them are up there for various reasons. Um, so yeah. And then this book he did as well. A very interesting way of look tackling philosophy actually. So it's a it's an autobiography of sorts and it's just showing his um, journey through philosophy and study and various other things. So you get it very much through his lens of discovering various philosophers. So you're going to get a very um, Brian McGee um, lens of how he, how his like philosophical studies evolved over time. Uh, what else have we got on the floor down here uh, that might interest? Oh yeah, so a couple of books here that I've noticed do tend to crop up on um, reading books for courses. This book, which I think is on Oxford University's sort of pre-reading list for their philosophy courses, uh, which is, is a really cool book by Simon Blackburn called Think. There's a number of different books by, I think, Simon Blackburn around philosophy. And there's another author whose name um, I can't remember. I've got a number of philosophy books actually on, uh, you know, on digital only, so I don't have physical copies of those. And uh, I was just trying to find whether there's a, a contents page here which just covers the different areas. Yeah, you can see it touts itself. Oh, there we go. So knowledge, mind, free will, the self, God, reasoning, the world, what to do. So it's it's very much, I think, in the style of the book we're going to flick through in a moment, which is The Problems of Philosophy, in that it's more the author trying to get you to reflect personally on these aspects. Now, you may find as you go through these, for instance, it does mention specific philosophers, but the, the idea is to be much more engaging in the way that um, the way that you sort of interact with the book on a personal level. And there's this one. Um, this is in quite good condition because my original exposure to this was through a digital copy and it did form the basis of a, a course in philosophy but I just can't remember which particular one it was and uh, it's not one I studied but it was one that I looked at and this is really cool this is by John Cottingham and I really enjoyed the layout of this so what it does is it goes through various areas of philosophy so we've got knowledge and certainty being a reality uh, language and meaning, mind and body, self and freedom, God and religion, science and method, morality and the good life, problems in ethics, authority in the state, beauty and art, human life and meaning. And in each section, these, these are arranged roughly historically. Um, um, 
and each one is a different philosopher and a section from their works, so an extract. But when you come through, what's really cool about this is, so we've got one here, the senses and the basis of knowledge, John Locke. So it's from the essay concerning human understanding. So first of all, you get the author's overview of the section of text. Then you get the text. Like that, and then we lead into another one. Now, at the end of each section, what you'll find is there are a series of questions um, to answer, one for each of of the. Um, here you go, specimen questions. So you get, yeah, basically one for each of the texts of it, from what I remember. So that's a pretty cool book. And then I think that's it in terms of my piles. So, my piles. Oh no, yeah, of course, another way in. Yeah, source text. So, of course, another obvious way into all of this um, is to, to basically just go, um, you know, go back to the original stuff and then just pan out from there. So, yeah, this is probably as good a starting point as any. Plato's The Republic. I mean, after all, as what they say, everything is a footnote to Plato. So yeah, start off with Plato and then just go down appropriate rabbit holes as you see fit. Or if you're more of a sort of interest in Stoicism, any one of the writers on Stoicism, um, this is as good a place as any to start, I think. Marcus Aurelius Meditations. I don't have a lot of Stoic books, but yeah, this is one I picked up years ago. And then if you're more interested in sort of, you know, Eastern philosophies or the, particularly, you know, like Taoism, um, then yeah, something like this. Yeah, and these are all the, the sort of classic penguin books. As you can see, these are well, well, well particularly this one, judging by the spine. Um, I actually have two copies of this in the house. <laughs> I think it's the only book I bought where I actually have two copies simultaneously. So I certainly think I bought a slightly more up-to-date translation of this one, actually, from what I remember. And then really just back to this, which is what I started off with. So I think this is this is a really interesting way in if you're really more interested in the um, the philosophy of knowledge and how we know with a little bit of metaphysics sort of mixed in. And I think that really yeah knowledge um things like you know epistemology um ontology those sort of areas um i'm probably more interested in than anything um, so it basically steps through um and the good thing about this as well is that this you can just download from um you know, it's all over the web it's 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 you know well out of copyright now, so there's numerous copies of this floating around on all sorts of sites. There's even like a LibreVox recording out there as well, so if you want to listen to it. Uh, and what I like about it is, yeah, but it's literally Bertrand Russell going through talking about. So we start off with appearance and reality. So he's talking about you know, looking at a table, looking at what's surrounding him, and just highlighting and, and discussing like the problems with that um, so you know I might look at the table and think oh yeah this is a brown table and then as I look harder it's like well it's different shades of brown and then I touch it and it feels hard and it feels like it might be consistent but then when I analyze it further there's not necessarily a consistency to the texture and if I get out a microscope though the table feels smooth i might notice that it looks really rough through a microscope so it's this whole thing of saying well if i'm questioning this then how far down the rabbit hole do i want to go in terms of questioning um appearance and reality generally and so what the book does is it sort walks through this discussion i suppose he's having between himself and the reader about these you know problems in philosophy 
So you know, it then moves into the existence of matter. So each thing really moves on from the next. Um, so we've got the nature of matter. And these are nice chunks as well. Like it's the sort of one you can just sit down in an evening, you know, read in probably less than 10 minutes and just then think about for several hours if you feel so inclined. Idealism. And then the other nice thing is it does name check certain other philosophers that might be relevant to this as well. So knowledge by acquaintance and knowledge by description is in here, which I know was a, um, a big thing for him. On induction. So a lot of these, anybody that's wrestled with, um, you know, issues around um, knowledge or probably recognize these as sort of classic things that get talked about like induction yeah on our knowledge of general principles how a prior knowledge is possible so no doubt yeah you're going to see Kant mentioned in here the world of universals in, on our knowledge of universals on intuitive knowledge truth and falsehood knowledge error and probable opinion Limits of philosophical knowledge. The value of philosophy, which is the final one. Maybe you should read that first. I did want to get onto the final section. And there's a rather nice little bibliographical note here. Um, so these are these are things that, that were listed as, as this, the student who wishes to acquire an elementary knowledge of philosophy will find it both easier and more profitable to read some of the works of the great philosophers than to attempt to derive an all round view from handbooks. The following are especially recommended by Russell himself. So Plato Republic. Descartes Meditations. Yeah, I was going to dig out Meditations as well. I do have a copy of that. Spinoza Ethics. Um, somewhere. I think I probably got that digitally, actually, thinking about it. I don't necessarily see that on the shelf. Yeah, the light's in my eye, so I can't see it too clearly. Uh, Leibniz the Monodology. Berkeley Three Dialogues between Hylas and... Philonus, that gets some, um, I think, name checked fairly on early on in the book when he's in the first chapter. Hume, Inquiry Concerning Human Understanding, and Kant's Prolegomena to Any Future Metaphysics. So that was something I think Kant wrote as a as a sort of beginning, you know, a summary to um to some of his main um some of his main sort of things and arguments. Um, that he was he was discussing, um, so that's why that's been been picked. I mean, I have a copy of um, something that, re that uh, Rutledge released under the name the the Moral Law. So that's got things like um, categorical imperative and things like this. This obviously here is more to do with um, you know metaphysics. Um, and the whole thing to do with the um, well, phenomenology and what is it, the noumenal world and the phenomenal world. So yeah, those those sort of things. And uh, I think I'm trying to think now. I think of the list, most of these I either have in paper or uh, digitally. Um, the only one I don't think is. I'm trying to remember if I've got a compendium of Berkeley's stuff or not. Um, and then Leibniz, whether I have that monad... I can't even say it. 
monadology. But yeah, this is a, a nice little book and like I say, one possible inroad to getting, you know, getting interested in philosophy. Um, and uh, what I like about it, I think, is that it, it does get you fairly early on, like wrestling with problems of the nature of knowledge, how we know, how we know what's out there, um, the different the differences between, say, um, what we see, what we experience, and what really might be there, um, those sort of things. So hopefully this was, was helpful. Thanks once again for watching. Bye for now, and I will catch you in a future episode.